Hello, and welcome to Ask the Experts. I'm David Dundee, Director of Education, and today's edition of Ask the Experts is all about mineral collecting because we've got a mineral symposium coming up here at TELUS. And first of all, I want to thank our sponsors, Century Bank and Courtyard uh, Marriott in Cartersville for their generous support. And tell you that next week we'll have five speakers uh, at, coming on at uh, 1215 uh, in the middle of the day uh, each day. Uh, March the 15th, Christopher Clark. March the 16th, our own Jose Santa Maria. And uh, March the 17th, Kimberly Wagner. And then uh, moving on to March the 18th, Peter McGaw. And finally, winding up on a high note with March the 19th with our friend Jeff Deere. So if you're into minerals and mineral collecting, please tune in to all of those programs. Well, today we're going to be talking about mineral collecting. If you ever wanted to, wanted to start your own collection or uh, wondered about how people get started in collecting minerals, well, you've come to the right place to hear about it today. Uh, so I want to introduce uh, our two experts today, our executive director, uh, Jose Santa Maria, expert uh, mineral collector, and also our own uh, geologist and curator. Uh, we have here Ryan Rooney. And so welcome to you both. And uh, I guess the first question just to start things rolling is uh, when did you start collecting and what got you interested in collecting? Well, um, as far as uh, uh, with, with me, uh, you know, as a kid, I was kind of ambivalent about science and then uh, one, uh, uh, we had a class on rocks and minerals when I was in fifth grade. So by that time I was 10 years old and uh, all of a sudden I got it. All of a sudden I was looking at rocks. I was, uh, I, you know, people thought I was a depressed kid because I was looking at the ground all the time, but I was, I was looking for rocks. And so I kind of sparked, uh, sparked an interest and it snowballed into uh, my parents giving me a geology kid and uh, with books and I learned how to identify minerals by their by their properties and I started started assembling a collection. Um, how about you, Ryan? Well, I had lots of rocks that you just gathered as you walked around, went on hikes with the family as a kid. Um, we would go to different arts and craft shows. And there was always a rocker gem or fossil dealer at these shows and I would buy something from them and that built up my collection as a, as a kid. Um, and, and it was just always something I was interested in. I was always interested in science, but it seemed to be the science that inter interested me the most. Um, you had uh, that earth science in fifth grade. I had earth science in eighth grade. And actually, when I think back on um, science classes and what I did or learned in any of those classes, I actually remember those earth science classes and all the labs and things we did more than any of my other science classes. And you mentioned Ryan that uh, you were uh, you you, you were uh, uh, buying minerals at, at shows or affairs and things like that. That's something that I would that I never did. I never had that opportunity. In fact, I never even knew there was such a thing as a mineral club. And so, anybody thinking of getting started, that's the first piece of advice uh, I'll give is just find a mineral club near you. You can just go get on the web. Now, mineral clubs near me is a, some excellent ones in the Atlanta area, the uh, Georgia Mineral Society and the uh, Cobb County Gem and Mineral Society. And, and, and I did say that I got interested in uh, minerals when I was 10 years old, but apparently I, I actually got the bug early on when I was a kid. And uh, if I could get a, uh, if I can get Elise to pull up a photo, uh, one that says Jose and Rocks. Uh, it's a photo of me uh, when I was, uh, uh, when I was, I think maybe two or three years old in Cuba. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Oh uh, in fact, I, I couldn't really remember. Uh, there you go. I uh, couldn't even remember uh, what uh, um, uh, uh, th that that experience. I think it must have been out in the out in the country. But there's me with uh, my first collection, my first rock collection, and uh, uh, I kind of lost track of that, but picked it up again when I was uh, when I was 10 years old. Well, uh Around 10, maybe a few years after that, I had a relative up in North Carolina that we used to visit, and she actually just had rocks that she had gathered from the farmland around the property that she lived on and our and other relatives that were nearby. And one thing she gave me at some point was this smoky quartz 
Wow. And now that I know a bit more about collecting, I'm like, want to get the maps and go figure out where this was out there in North Carolina and um, figure out if there's more to go find. And, and let me let me know when you go because I want to I want to go with you. Uh, that's a beautiful that's a beautiful crystal. It is. I, I know. I know when. Uh, uh, so when I was growing up, uh, uh, you know, my dad worked six days a week. So he was in the restaurant business, but he always took Sunday off. And so uh, uh, we would go on outings, like say, to Stone Mountain. And by that time, I, I was recognizing tourmaline in, in Stone Mountain and, and micas, or I would walk to school and find some garnet shit. So I, would, I, I, would, I started recognizing, rec recognizing minerals early on. So what types of things did you guys want to collect when you start, first started collecting? What was, the, what was the piece of eye candy that really attracted you? Well, I think like a lot of kids, you know, you like those fluorite octahedrons, you like the cubes that pyrite makes, some of these really just just fun shapes and, and colors and textures. Um, and I think that that's a great gateway to maybe have conversations with kids. If you are knowledgeable about these items and a kid has that collection, share that knowledge. I think as a kid, I didn't really understand these ideas behind these minerals. And I help my kids collect now and a lot, they, we, I take them to the rock shows, or when I go to the rock shows representing the museum out in Denver and Tucson, I buy you know, out of the five and ten dollar bins um, stuff to bring back for my kids. And now we sit down and look at a rock collection, and I can explain stuff in a way I never actually got to understand. Jose said he knew about the tourmalines at Stone Mountain. I think when I was a kid, I just enough to know that it was some kind of granite. Of course, now we know it's actually. A monzonite, of course, monzonite, not even actually a granite, but uh, I, you know, these are the places that I went. But the the collecting that way is, I think, just really what was interested me. You know, one of the first things I remember purchasing was actually a fossil um, and this little trilobite. Um, but I, I still have these memories of pulling it out of my box and looking at it along with all these other fossils, all the other minerals and fossils and rocks that I collected. Um, well, and, and growing up, actually, my uh, our public library had a really neat mineral display, and, and some of the things that Ryan just mentioned, you know, the fluorite, oxyhedron, the, uh, the pyrite cubes, and so that really Im Im impressed me, of course. You know, as, as much as I tried, I mean, th there was nothing that uh, fantastic, that colorful uh, uh, where I was collecting, so I just really, I really just picked up what I could. Uh, I know uh, we, we we travel, for example, up to northwest Georgia, and I was able to pick up some fossils. And uh, uh, probably a, a memorable incident, incident that happened was uh, we were traveling up through uh, Bartow County. Uh, well, there you go. There's a picture of actually uh, uh, a field trip that I led. So uh, fast forward to now, uh, and and what Ryan said about sharing sharing your enthusiasm. I love taking people out on trips. And so this picture you see here is a picture of um, uh, my taking teachers uh, in the summer uh, on a staff development course uh, on, on, a, on a fossil collecting trip. Now, now the trip that I was talking about uh, was my, uh, my family. And uh, we, were, we stopped by Lake Alatoona and I picked up a chunk of iron ore and I asked my dad what it was. Now, I asked my dad because he actually had a little bit of uh, experience uh, with mining when he was in Cuba. He actually, uh, uh, for a brief period, was in charge of a manganese mine and then became president of a gold mine. Now, wow. all this does not mean he knew anything about minerals, but I thought he did. So I, I asked him what this chunk of iron ore was. And he goes, son, this was like a perfect example of dinosaur doo-doo. <laughs> and of course, it annoyed me because I knew that's not what it was. And I later found, you know, through my uh, experience in, in, in uh, uh, testing minerals through the properties, I, uh, I figured out uh, what it was, a middle called vertite, but only later on did I learn that there was actually such a thing as dinosaur poop. So uh, what kind of uh, rocks do you, do, you, do you have in your, in your collection? Uh, <laughs> you, you, you want to start, Ryan? Well, I think Jose's got the bigger collection than I've managed to collect, but a, a lot of the things that I have in my collection are just places that I've been for, uh, fortunate enough to go to um, really during um, my time as an undergrad, um, the different field trips that I went on um, and got to collect pieces in different places. Um, I have on the shelf behind me 
um, pieces from various. I've got stuff from Graves Mountain, so the specular, the uh, iridescent hematite, and the um, kyanite with some rutile in it. Um, I have um, specimens from a trip out in um, in uh, Texas that you know with the anhydrite and um, and gypsum that do that grow in layers. Um, just all sorts of different things. One of my favorite trips was actually a trip um, to Topaz Mountain. Um, I had a mineralogy professor who was going to cancel class one week because he was going out to the GSA meeting and he had planned to drive out there and do some collecting. And just on a whim, I said, why don't you take the class? And he happened to have a side budget um, that allowed him to do that. And we filled up a 15 seater van and we drove from Georgia to Seattle and we hit the um, Topaz Mountain in Utah. Um, and so lots of great experiences collecting in different places. Um, field trip as an undergrad to Costa Rica. So I came back with um, sands from the beaches, all sorts of minerals in there. That's, that's a good micro mineral, or mineral experience there. Um, and some people, that's the way they collect minerals is, is sand. Um, the, I think the Georgia uh, Mineral Society actually has a sand section in their group. Um, but the all sorts of things, and my collection has grown from things I've collected, a few things I've purchased. Um, a mineralogy professor at UT um, had moved on, and the department was moving the building, was moving buildings, and he had taken everything that actually mattered for, scientifically and left some stuff on some shelves. And really, it was stuff without a location information, but it was still minerals that I didn't have. And we were told to just clean out the room and throw everything away. And so me and a few other um, grad students, we just grabbed the things that we wanted. So I got some a dioptase and some a big piece of barrel, you know, these kinds of things. Cool. But th that's kind of what my collection is. It's just what I've acquired through these experiences. So when I look at a specimen, I'm not only looking at what the mineral is or something from a locality, I actually have memories and friends that were part of that experience. Well, and uh, I, co I collect in two ways. I mean, I, I, I love nothing more than to go out field collecting. In fact, uh, this Friday, I'm taking Ryan and a bunch of other staff, uh, including you, David, uh, yeah, out, to, out, to, out to collect fossils. So we're going to get we're going to get good and dirty. So just going out and finding things and finding things that uh, pulling something out of the ground nobody has seen before. That's very exciting. And so over the years, and I've been collecting a little bit longer than you have, Ryan, because I'm a little bit older than you are. Uh, but uh, I, I, I mostly collected around uh, Georgia and the southeast. So I have, I have geodes from Tennessee, barite from uh, right here in Carsville. Uh, you mentioned Grace Mountain, Ryan. I got I got stuff from there too. Uh, kyanite, coarse crystals. Uh, uh, but but as far as fuel collecting, more, mostly in the southeast. And at least if you could show the photograph uh, called the uh, Case One. Uh, so over the past maybe uh, 10, 15 years, I, I started buying. Uh, there you go. Uh, that's what that's that's one of my fancy cases uh, of colorful minerals. Uh, and these are minerals from all over the world because uh, at, at this point in my life, I, I don't think I'll be traveling to China to collect fluorite or, or, or you know, tra traveling around the world. And so the world comes to co comes to me at the mineral shows. And so, yeah, I, I do put out some money uh, uh, on specimens on location. And those I put uh, upstairs in my um, uh, in, in my den. But the stuff that I, that I collected, it, a lot of it's not as colorful, but li like Brian said, more meaningful because uh, you, you know you, uh, you collect it yourself, you collect it with friends. Uh, you know, th there's different experiences you can attach to that collection. Well, uh, Katie uh, wanted to know uh, where you can find fossils in Georgia. Uh, that's a that's a good question, and uh, actually. If you look at a, if you if you study a little bit the geology of Georgia, uh, you realize that uh, most of Georgia uh, is uh, covered by sedimentary rocks. So where where there's sedimentary rocks, is a uh, big possibility of uh, finding fossils. So northwest Georgia, like right here where, where uh, the museum is at, and further uh, and, and further north northwest, uh, sedimentary rocks. You can find some Paleozoic fossils. These are fossils that go from you know, from 300 to 550 million years. And then in, in South Georgia, which is an area that Ryan has studied more uh, than I have. Uh, talk about South Georgia, uh, Ryan. Well, well, that's pretty much just got the whole Cenozoic. You can everything after 
the um, dinosaur extinction or the, the um, you have um, the old coastline 100 million years ago during the Cretaceous was uh, from Columbus to uh, make into Augusta. And as sea level retreated, you just had these deposits that built up all the way to the present day. Um, and now you can go out to the different layers of the rock out there to collect, or even in the, especially in the rivers, because the rivers have been eroding through all of those different layers. So you get mixed up stuff from all over those time periods. You get, um, you can get stuff that lived on land and you get stuff that lived in the ocean. So you get um, crocodile teeth and um, whale um, teeth. And, you know, you've got the, uh, and whale bones and whale ear bones and, and fish teeth and, you got your your clams, but you can also find sea urchins. Um, so it's a whole mix of different things, and you just it's 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 quite a mess to try to figure out. But there, but in general, it gets younger the further south you go. And, and Ryan, you mentioned sea urchins. You want to say a little bit more about that? What, oh, what, what, what you're involved in? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's actually my area of of study. I, I focus on South American sea urchins now. But as an undergrad, I went to Georgia Southwestern, and my advisor there, um, Bert Carter, did a lot with uh, sea urchins in Georgia and Florida. And I actually did collect quite a few um, in in that area. In Albany, Georgia, you can go, and there's some areas you can pull out some really good sized um, sea urchins. Um, so yeah. And and in a very uh, 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 a very constrained area just south of Columbus, you can actually find dinosaur fossils, and these are uh, these are uh, uh, bits and pieces of dinosaurs that have been washed out uh, to sea and buried under ocean sediments. But uh, I, I mentioned this earlier, and I'm, I may I may repeat it again, but boy, if you really want to go collect. Uh, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. Join a mineral club, and, and in fact, uh, I'll make sure uh, before the end of the day that we post on our, on our Facebook page, uh, if it's not there already, a list of uh, mineral clubs in Georgia. That, that's the best way because you can uh, you can join a group. They know where to go. They schedule field trips all the time, and uh, you'll you'll really find some neat stuff. Yeah. Well, kind of along that same line, uh, guys. Uh, uh, Joseph is asking about uh, publications, and he said when he first started collecting, he was using the Peterson's field guide to rocks and minerals. Uh, what was uh, the publication that led you first when you first started collecting? For me, it was the little golden book, Rocks and Minerals. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I've had two or three different copies of that, and I just worn it out. Um, it has introductions to techniques that we don't even use now. A lot of people don't do the blowpipes, and 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 you know. And here I am, a kid. I'm like, I'm never going to do that. My mom's not going to let me play with fire. <laughs> but uh, but the other techniques to you know using most hardness and and learning about um, fracture and and cleavage and and the structure of crystals are pretty well explained in that book. Um, and nowadays, my kids have a, a a very similar book that's probably got a lot more information in it um the um uh, there i forget the company that publishes it but it's actually now got photographs versus the old um drawings of of things uh, but these these kids size books were kind of the start for me and then i eventually got an old copy of um poe and and that classic rocks and mineral and i think kind of replacing that has been the audubon society um, versions of stuff well, I too started with the, the golden books of minerals and fossils and, and dinosaurs. Those, those were classic. And uh, for Christmas, I think when I was maybe uh, 10, 11, my parents gave, gave me a, just this geology kit uh, that included a book that, where I learned to identify minerals by their properties. And you're right. I mean, it had, it had like a, a, a little burner that you can that you can light on fire and do the blowpipe blowpipe test, which I'm not going to go into, but you, you should Google it uh, if you're if you want to know what uh, what that is. And Ryan, like I said, I'm a little older than you are, so in my generation, my parents let me do. You want to light a fire? Sure, just don't burn down the house. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, and, I, and you know, I was I was able to test minerals with uh, minerals with acid. But uh, you know, fast forward into my adult life, uh, the book that really uh, that I used and still use is the um, what was then known as Bolton 92 Minerals of Georgia by Bob Cook that we updated, we here at TELUS updated back in 2016. So uh, Minerals of Georgia, uh, it's, just a, it's just a really thorough compendium of uh, where you find minerals throughout the state. 
Now, it, it doesn't give you localities, but it gives you an idea of what you find in certain areas. And it really, it really helped me uh, it, it, when, I, when, when I was out collecting on my own, it, it helped me kind of guide, uh, got me to know what to expect. So that, that, that's a mineral that I really recommend. We sell it at the store here. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, Minnows of Georgia by uh, Robert B. Cook, Julian Gray, and I am the editor. Well, oh. so Mary wants to know, are, th are there mineral clubs in the Atlanta area that are for kids? You know, uh, all mineral clubs are for kids. Uh, I mean, uh, don't, don't be intimidated. These are uh, clubs, these are hobbyists, these are people that want, want to go out, uh, th that want to learn. I want to do this for fun. Uh, there's actually, for example, the Georgia Mineral Society has a has a junior section, so they they, they have meetings especially for kids. But also going out on, on field trips, going out on digs. I mean, the whole family is encouraged to go. Uh, and, and in fact, uh, uh, a lot of these mineral clubs, geologists join these clubs because they're not out collecting rocks anymore. They're out doing groundwater testing or, 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 or consulting and things like that. So, uh, so a lot of geologists join these clubs to go back to the roots. Uh, any more thoughts on this, Ryan? Well, yeah, I, I, I've actually seen as families have been at these shows and they, or at, at the meetings with these clubs or out at digs and how the, the more experienced members of the club and even the professionals like myself and you, we get to mentor these people that, that come to these um, these sites and these events. And so it really is a way to pass on that information and to glean more as opportunities that I wish I had known were available to me when I was a, a kid. Um, I lived close to where the Georgia Mineral Society is and and when you look at their history, like they were around when I was a kid, um, it was something that I could have done. Um, and 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 so, but it, it wasn't anything that I knew about. You know, even this day and age with the internet, we have a little more access to this knowledge. Um, but I think the biggest part about these clubs is the mentoring opportunity. Um, take your kids with you. You're going to learn. They're going to learn. You're going to enjoy it. Um, and the dig is is generally a lot of the digs are in places that it is safe to take a kid, or they they or they have a an area of the dig that is going to be conducive to having kids dig. So from your early times of collecting, did you lose interest in collecting and come back to it? Or have you always been interested in collecting from early time on? All right, come on, David. We've all been teenagers, right? And so <laughs> at some point, at, at, at some point in, in high school, you know, uh, playing electric guitar became more important than, than, than collecting rocks. But uh, but the, the strength, at least with me, uh, I couldn't find, I couldn't get my friends interested in this. So it was just me or, or, or my family. Uh, so after a while, yeah, playing music or, or getting into art became more important to me. I, I guess I never 100% lost it. I mean, I, I did a, uh, for example, a high school uh, high school geography program, but it was on the geology of the moon. And uh, I got fascinated by uh, early PBS specials when plate tectonics was becoming uh, accepted. Uh, and then uh, in my travels, even though I may have been hiking with, with a girlfriend or, or something like that, you know, I always seem to pick up a rock. Uh, and, and, and then I guess when I was in college is when my interest got reignited. And then that's when I joined mineral clubs and became involved in, involved with them. And, uh, you know, uh, Ryan mentioned, you know, how, uh, all of a sudden you learn enough to start mentoring uh, other people. I think I think I learn more when I uh, when I was asked to do a program on something. Uh, you know, you learn more. Uh, and so that's how I really got involved into doing uh, rock and mineral programs. Uh, how about you, uh, Ryan? So I had probably a lull in, again, teenage years and, and college. Um, I, I always had rocks on my shelves in my bedroom, so my bookshelves. You had to shove the rocks to the side to get to any of the books that you wanted to read. Um, and you know, I, I traveled for a couple of years in Brazil and didn't collect any rocks while I was there, and I don't know why. Didn't even pick up some sand um, on the beach. Shame on you. <laughs> uh, I, I was too focused on 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 the uh, the religious reasons I was there as a missionary. But I I. Um, when I got back and started college, within the second semester of school, I was in geology classes. And then um, I made a friend there whose father 
was a professor in geology who became my um, advisor when I went to my, and got my second degree. Um, but I ended up going on the Georgia Geologic Survey, Georgia Geologic Society trips my first year of college, and and that that was all she wrote. You know, I just I, I went on those field trips, collected rocks. I and my dorm room had rocks in it. I had boxes of rocks underneath my bed, and <laughs> and and then and ever since, you know. Well. Oh. Uh, let, let, let me let me jump in. Oh, there. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me yeah. jump in because I yeah my, my my story is more convoluted because by the time I got to college I decided to major in art mostly because I wasn't that good in chemistry in, in high school so I thought I better I better not not, not get with science but uh, the the more I painted the more my pieces uh, took on this geologic look uh, that I found you know let me go back to my geology textbook and that's when I realized. That's what I really like. So eventually, even though I kept up, I kept on painting and I had commissions and and uh, I had a studio. I mean, I, I, I gradually shifted more to, to studying uh, uh, rocks and minerals. And actually, my my artistic talents got uh, uh, got um, uh, conveyed by computer graphics, where I was designing geology type of uh, 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 brochures and uh, handouts and things like that. Mm. So if, uh, Katie wants to know if either one of you has ever found a uh, a megalodon tooth. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I had a I had a trip planned a couple months a couple months ago, and we were going to go, um, but one of the um, guys who's going to bring a boat down had his car break down, so there's only going to be one boat, not the two boats. So I I let the other people go, and it turns out that their trip. Didn't go as planned, so it actually was good that I didn't go. But I'm I'm working on a trip to go to a dredge pile off the coast of Georgia um, in the next few months. So you can get out there on the boats and you can go dr look for that. I know some people go diving and actually hunt for those um, down um, off the coast, and other people get lucky and find them in the rivers. But I've yet to find uh, an omegalodon tooth. And, and you know, to, uh, first of all, you need to know where to look and. Uh, a megalodon, megalodon teeth are, are found mostly along along the coast and sediments close to the coast because that's, that's where the sediments that date back to the megalodon era uh, are, are deposited. Now, I have found shark teeth, but I think the biggest one that I found is big. <laughs> Not nowhere near <laughs> megalodon. Yes, yes. We want we want something this big. <laughs> oh wow. Well, Rachel wants to know if you have a favorite mineral of all the things you minerals you collect. I do. I don't know if it's visible. Um, I on the topaz that I collected in Utah, there is a tiny one millimeter piece of red barrel on it, and wow. I love that mineral. It is a beautiful mineral. If you want to really know what it is, come to tell us. We've got some specimens here that are much larger, and, and you see the beautiful raspberry color. But that is my favorite mineral by far. And, and for me, it depends on the day, it depends on the year, uh, it depends on what, what I've collected. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, if, you are, if you're a parent of about 10 kids, you know, who's your favorite kid, really? How, how, how do you say that? But, but yeah, I, I did a lot of work on the, on barite last year on barite mi microcrystal. So that became my favorite mineral for a while. But uh, I mean, I, you know, I've collected uh, geodes, I've collected coarse crystals. I mean, it really depends on uh, not just uh, not not necessarily the mineral, but the quality the, the quality of the specimen. So, uh, some of my best pieces, for example, are uh, some petrified wood logs from Brilliant, Alabama. That's just covered with millions of coarse crystals. They're beautiful. You know, that's, that's, that's some of the favorite pieces that I found. Mm. Well, Robert uh, asks. Uh, he's an entomologist, and he. He wears a bracelet with a beetle in acrylic. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's uh, his lucky bug. And he wants to know if either one of you uh, carry a, a rock or a mineral with you as your lucky rock or conversation starter. I, I don't have one in my pocket per se, but I have rocks at my desk. Um, and that they're always ready when if anyone visits me that I can share with them. Um, I've got rocks in my um, shed at home, so you know in my workshops where the kids come out, I, they they have stuff they get that they play with and look at. Um, so it's just there, there's always something there, but not in my pockets. 
and, and, and same with me. I mean, I have rocks in my office, I got rocks at home, in, in my car. And, and once in a while, if the subject uh, uh, demands that I'll carry one in my pocket, uh, for example, when we had a, a pretty cool meteorite exhibit, you know, I had a meteorite in my pocket, so in case we started talking about the exhibit, I go, hey, you want to touch a meteorite? Because, you know, if it's my piece, people can touch it. But no, uh, 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 I, I don't think either of one of us uh, carry uh, uh, minerals as far as uh, uh, as a lucky talisman. <laughs> so if you have, if, where do you like to go to collect minerals? What's your favorite places to go? Where, where, where this, where the stuff is, <laughs> where the findings good, you know, what, that's, you know, when other people know that, Hey, that we can actually get something here. It's, it's disappointing to go to a place and you all you find is mud. Um, unless you're, um, unless that's what you study, but, <laughs> but, um, it really is. That's why I like going to these, uh, find these digs with the clubs. Cause you first, you get the permission to go to the locality and you can, f and then the, you find what's there. Um, and, and a lot of times the favorite trip is the most recent trip because you're enjoying um, what you just found and it's, you're still learning about that material that you just got. Well, so I when, mean, go ahead, go ahead. So when you go collecting, what kind of tools do you bring with you to collect? Well, at least I think you need to pull up the, uh, the slide that says gear because uh, uh, over the years I've uh, acquired quite an arsenal of, uh, 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 of, of tools and uh, I don't know how well uh, people can see this, but uh, I guess my tools are divided into two categories, uh, digging tools and rock banging, uh, rock, rock uh, banging uh, tools, because uh, it, it depends on where you go. Sometimes you have to dig before you get to, before you get to specimens. Sometimes if you go to a quarry, for example, Vulcan Materials Company, uh, you know, one of one of our patrons. I mean, they're very generous, letting us into their quarries. So you see, just big rocks. So to get to get the big rocks sides down to fit in your car, you have to use sledgehammers like the one you see uh, with the yellow handle, uh, and then you have you use different size hammers uh, to trim the to trim the rocks down. Uh, chisels are very important uh, because uh, chisels not just to break rocks, but when you're trying to get fossils out of, out of layered rocks like shales, you need, you need flat chisels. And of course, uh, whatever tools you have, you have to have something to put your rocks in. So you see I have a five gallon paint bucket there, I have a backpack, uh, canvas bags, and uh, something not shown there, but very important is just newspaper, uh, paper towels, and uh, uh, things to protect your specimens. How about you, uh, how about you uh, Ryan? I have a lot of these same tools and I'll put them all in the back of the car and when I get to the site, I'll pick which ones I'm going to carry out with me. But one thing I noticed that's not on your table or in your bag is your notebook. <laughs> you got to ah. have, you got to take notes, talk about um, who went collecting with you, write down the date. It's in my uh, back pocket. <laughs> uh, there you go. Okay. I always keep it, I always keep it with me. Yeah, I've got my field notebook that's separate, but uh, I, I, uh, you got to have, you got to write it down because you're going to forget that. You think you're going to remember, but you, you, there's details that get lost if you don't write them down. But all of these tools here, I think there's a picture of me using a sledge there, um, Elise, um, a little hand sledge. Um, and uh, and so one of the things you got to do is make sure you have eye protection when you, if you are actually pounding against the rock. Um, and, and you see that, and you see that in the very back right of the picture, you see my my goggles there. And, and by the way, we keep talking to uh, to Elise. Elise is our AV guru, who's uh, uh, keeping the show running. So she's the she's the one who's pulling up the photos for you. My God, uh, uh, golly, Ryan, you're actually doing some work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a very unusual picture. <laughs> so, so yeah, Very just cool. out in the field. Um, you, my notebook. Um, this was actually a, a, a field trip in um, college, um, doing a structure, um, getting a sample of rock there. Um, you can see my rock hammer and a pry bar. Um, but you got you got my notebook in my um, bag there on the side. Um, a lot of people carry a backpack. I don't like having the weight on my back because it get hot. So I have a lot of side bags when I do field stuff. Um, and and, and then to me, another important part of, of what you carry in the field is what clothes you wear. Um, this picture of me here, I don't, I don't like to wear jeans. Sometimes if I'm going to be um, just out of the car and, and not too far away, I'll, I'll do that. But, but jeans are, can be 
you can get chafed if it's hot or you can get, end up with issues with cold hypothermia if you get wet. So stay away from cotton. Use the good um, modern fabrics. When, but well, that's I, another area of your tools. Well, so I, like here, yeah, uh, that's not. Hey, you look, you look pretty sharp in that one. I'm out yeah. in the field in Chile, um, Very doing, cool. some, doing some field work. <coughs> um, but you got to protect yourself against the sun there. That's I'm not too far from the equator. Um, it's a desert environment. Um, that's actually where I was collecting some sea urchins. Um, the, the first, my first published paper came out of that field work. Mm. Well, and, and at least if you don't, if you can pull up uh, uh, the picture, it says Grays 4. 2613. It's a picture of my friend Jeff Deer and I on Graves Mountain. And, and Jeff is our speaker uh, Friday of next week during our, our mineral symposium. So I, I, I do agree with you on jeans. I don't like wearing jeans that they become uh, pretty hot. Uh, I think we lost a the picture there. Uh, oh, we're back with that with Ryan, but there you go. Uh, but I, I like to have, uh, I like to wear cargo pants because so that way I can put all, 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 all kinds of gear in my pockets. Um, and uh, but something very important to me is uh, wearing a hat because uh, my face can get really red when it gets when it gets sunburned. Uh, that's very important. And one little tool that I that I that I didn't mention, uh, I think you'll agree, uh, Ryan, is uh, is to carry your loop uh, with you also. You, yes. you don't always need it. Uh, uh, you know, most of the time you'll find you, you'll find big pieces. You don't need a loop. But uh, there are many areas where where uh, I go to collect uh, micro minerals, micro crystals. And it's, it's good to have a handle on what uh, may be possible when you put it under a microscope, but you can't take a microscope with you. So taking the loop, it, it, it's, a good, uh, uh, it's a good thing to have. So uh, Nacho wants to know, uh, is it legal to hunt for arrowheads since they're made of rock? It depends on what land you're on. And if you have permission to be on the land, um, and that's really where it sits. Um, the the um, if you're on state property, generally no. Um, if you're on property that you own, what you find is yours. And if you're on property that a friend has said yes, you can collect, then you're generally okay. Um, and, and Ryan says generally because the uh, the laws uh, regarding archaeological objects are a lot stricter. That with minerals and fossils here in the states, and, and uh, I don't know about you, Ryan, but I do not collect arrowheads. I don't collect anything archaeological, uh, so I don't worry about that. But you could stray into if you're collecting arrowheads, you could stray into pottery, and then you could stray into uh, uh, where you're collecting at an old village or or a burial site, and that's when the laws get really strict. And so uh, I, I'm not gonna advise you on that since I don't collect archaeological yeah. objects, but uh, I would become more up to speed with the laws uh, uh, by actually reading what the statues are. Now, one thing to note, if you're out in the field and you do find um, what look like human bones, there are, do not mess with them because I, regardless of how you mess with them, you're going to break a, pro commit a felony because either you're messing with a crime scene, you're messing with a grave, or you're disturbing native, um, uh, a native site. So in all three situations, you need to get with authorities and, and deal with that one. But minerals again are a, are a little more cut and dry. If you have the right to be on that land and you, the landowner has let you be on that land, or if you own the land, in most cases, what you find on the surface is yours. Um, I'm, not gonna get, I'm not gonna get into below surface rights, but what you find on the surface would be, would be available. And, and you bring up a good point, Ron, because even with us, mineral collectors, fossil collectors, I mean, when we go collect, you know, we go collect in places where we have permission to be there. You know, we're not trespassing onto somebody's property. Uh, for example, I mentioned we're going fossil collecting this this Friday. We we have permission to go there. You can you can collect legally on the on on roadsides, for example, uh, but you know you cannot collect on state park. You cannot you cannot collect on on, on national parks. Uh, and so you know, be sure when you go collecting that you're doing it legally. So do you have any advice on for future collectors on how to collect rocks responsibly and safely? Is there a join, good guide for that? Join a mineral club. <laughs> yeah, the, the biggest thing is don't go out with someone. Um, have a have a friend you're going with collecting by yourself. You can get into some some dangerous situations. You need to have a buddy. Um, the the um, 
and then just you don't need to get everything that's out there um get stuff for yourself get a few things to share and then and then you leave leave stuff behind so others can get it um now i think there are some situations where you know that the collecting is going to be short and you need to get what you can i think jose's got a story about that i i are you referring to my uh my geode collecting uh, uh, adventures up in Woodbury, Tennessee. Yeah, something uh, more your geode jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> geode jackpot. Uh, at least if you could pull up uh, uh, the slide that says Woodbury 2. Um, uh, th there was a situation, uh, Woodbury 2. two. Uh, there you go. That's my buddy Jeff again. Uh, so we got wind of our construction site up in Woodbury, Tennessee. Now, Woodbury is known for geodes. Uh, you can collect them along creeks and uh, along roadsides sometimes. But uh, they were building a new road and they just unearthed dirt that was just chock full of geodes. And they had uh, thrown the dirt and leveled it on a field uh, temporarily because that, that field was going to be grassed over and uh, that's going to be off limits after a few months. So we went there a couple of times and uh, it was just crazy. It's probably the craziest collecting experience I ever had. You were walking on geodes. Uh, Jeff was collecting big ones to, to crack later. I was cracking them on the spot. Behind me, uh, uh, behind us, you see my truck. You can barely see how full of geodes uh, the, the truck is. Um, and we went there twice. We went there twice in two weeks. In fact, after the first time, we explained to our wives, honey, we have a rock collecting emergency. We have to go back. <laughs> <laughs> because because we knew in a few months that was not going to be uh, that, that that was not going to be there, uh, and so I think I must have brought back I don't know two three hundred geodes, and at least if you could show uh, the slide Woodbury Four the one you had uh, 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 the one you had there you go so see those are the geodes that, now as 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 Ryan mentioned you know we're we're not out to collect everything there is in this case we were. And people came after us and they collected as much. But what I did was uh, I was able to give uh, a geo to every member of my staff. David has a geo uh, on his desk, uh, a part time staff, housekeepers, uh, everybody, everybody got a geo, family got geo. So at the end of the day, after, after all the geos you see there, I think I have my maybe, maybe uh, six or seven uh, in my collection. So uh, that's something else. It's, it's, it's fun to collect. It's fun to display, but it's fun to give your stuff away too. <laughs> what kinds of fossils have you found? Uh, for me, uh, I, I, I generally like invertebrate fossils. Uh, it, 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 a lot of people don't get excited by them, but uh, brachiopods, crinoids, uh, I like to collect in areas where you have a whole variety of fossils. And then of course, I, I love collecting plant fossils, which is what we're doing this Friday. Uh, Plant fossils that they back to, to the Pennsylvanian. Never found a dinosaur fossil, uh, or, or really, I don't. I don't think I ever found a vertebrate fossil. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's really not my main area of interest. Uh, Ryan? Yeah, I've collected fossils all over the southeast, um, in South Georgia, Northwest Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida. Um, I've largely focused on sea urchins, but I've got lots of clams and and oysters, and and you got ammonites and. The only vertebrate material I have is I think some stuff I got out in New Mexico. Um, it's it's indistinguishable in ver um, I'm sorry, vertebrate stuff. It's indistinguishable ver vertebrate stuff. It's just chunks of bone. It's obviously bone, but you can't tell even what part of the body it was. It was probably some larger bone, but it's just chunks of bone that were on the surface. Um, I don't have a, a lot of experience with vertebrates anyway, um, but I, I, I prefer to find some sea urchins. It, uh, that's that's my biggest and I and in South America when I was um, doing field work in Argentina um, I did find some Rome bifrins they're a relative of sea urchins and and other um, uh, it, it's they're in a kind of derm and actually I actually got a picture of the plate that I found there um, that, to, to show you guys if Elise will pull that up um, it's RH is the word Rome bifrin um, and uh, they're I'm just waiting for her to pull it up. <laughs> um, but we went down to Argentina in uh, 2013 with my advisor, and we were just looking for these echinoderms, and I, I got to find. So you can see little bits of the animal there. It's all just that entire, that is all just bits and the, bits of the stem, bits of the body um, of, of these of these organisms, these echinoderms. You see um, all on that. 
And so those those specimens are are being described by my advisor and they're down at um, the University in Cordoba, Argentina. Um, and in all fairness, I mean, it, it, you really should know the geology of uh, where you're going to be collecting. If you're collecting in Northwest Georgia, you're just about 100 percent going to find invertebrate fossils and then some plant fossils. Don't don't try to expect to find bones. Uh, South Georgia, you, you have more uh, uh, variety, possibility of more variety. So I mean, and, and I take it back. I, I have found in, uh, vertebrate fossils, but shark teeth, a small, a small shark teeth. Yes, but. Uh, but you know, you're still going to find mostly invertebrates in South Georgia, but you have a better chance of finding uh, uh, maybe a mastodon tooth or a, a large shark tooth or, or, or things like that. But you really need to know the geology of where you're collecting. Do not look for fossils in the Atlanta area. It's all metamorphic and igneous rocks. No fossils there. Yeah, there are some vertebrates. There's, there's one Piedmont locality with vertebrates, and that's out towards Athens, the, the, the Kettle Creek. Uh, formation, but that's actually a little river basin where some stuff um, uh, was preserved. And we do have some vertebrate fossils here in Bartow County, um, but that's actually been completely collected out. Um, the Lads Quarry and um, and then the uh, other locations have actually been protected at this point. Um, the Kingston Cave, Saltpeter Cave, that's now protected. But uh, that material has been um, collected by, by scientists and is very well um, characterized in the literature. So you can read up all about that. And we have some of that stuff on exhibit here at TELUS. That's very interesting. So Nick wants to know how many different types of minerals have you found in a single specimen? Ooh. I, I, I never actually I, I figured guess, out a count. I, I, I guess you're probably talking about a rock that's going to yeah. have different, uh, 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 you know, that being visible, probably like, you know, two, three, or four. I mean, uh, some sometimes you'll find combinations of, uh, of minerals. Sometimes, like here in Bartow County, you may find some barite crystals with uh, uh, manganese uh, minerals, for example. Uh, but probably just a, in, in one specimen, usually uh, uh, just a few. Uh, I, think Ryan? The, I think the rock in Georgia that would have the best um, quantity would be the red oak quarry. Because um, yeah. that, that stuff's going to have your zeolites, and sometimes you've got two or three zeolite minerals right there, and they're going to be white, and you can try to characterize those. And you got some calcite, you got some garnet, you got some epidote, you got the diopside. Um, and and then there might even be another feldspar in there. So that's what was that six, seven, or eight minerals on that list. And so that's probably the 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 one rock in Georgia that would have the most minerals is that red oak quarry. Yeah, and I've collected a, a nice piece that's on exhibit here that uh, I think that's one you're referring to. Uh, yeah. it, it, do, it does have about six, seven, eight different minerals. I think yeah. Um, um, I, I I I'd have to really think to find something with more in it and really anywhere um now when you start getting into like localities that have a lot in them the locality with the most minerals is the sumeb mine in um in namibia the sumeb is how oh, is it over 200 minerals in that yeah. location so it's the location with the most minerals and then um second to it is the mount saint Hilaire mine up in um montreal canada and the Mount Saint Hilaire actually is the location with the most unique minerals. Um, so I think they have 60 species of minerals that are only from that location. Um, Sumeb is like third in that count. Um, so you got those two localities. If you really want to learn about places with a lot of minerals, those are two to really look up. Um, I think currently on the Mount Saint Hilaire is not very well not producing very well the latest um i heard from anyone who was in that but in the past it, you were getting lots of really cool stuff out there and the 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 sumeb stuff in namibia that's you start digging into the history of that it's stuff coming up from different levels of the mine and all these kinds of things it's a really interesting history hmm. but i th think in the u.s um, more geographically, if you just look at the Arizona, New Mexico, kind of just above Mexico area, that's a lot of different minerals that are available to find, but not necessarily all in the same location. And, and there are collectors, Orion, that collect only minerals from Sumer. There are collectors yeah. who specialize in one particular locality. Yeah. So, 
And that's one way to do a collection. You can mm -hmm. pick a mineral or pick a, a form or pick a color. Um, but I think some of the, yeah, the, the picking one location is kind of a fun way also. So can you each uh, recount one of your favorite collecting stories? Your collecting adventure. Well, I already mentioned mine that that, that is uh, the geo trip. Uh, I had one that's memorable, not necessarily a favorite, but uh, I, I keep mentioning this this locality for uh, fossil plants. And uh, at least if you could pull up the um, uh, the photo that says Durham, D U R H A M, uh, uh, and and so. Uh, in the past, I've been involved in organizing many trips. Many trips, I, I still do. Uh, this particular trip, where you see me in the snow, which is not the best <laughs> conditions to collect. Uh, and if it was just me and a friend going there, we would not have gone. But we had invited collectors from all over the southeast, and just come and dig. If no RSVP, just show up. There's plenty of stuff there. And uh, we left in the morning, headed up. Uh, this is uh, this is on top of Lookout Mountain. Uh, beautiful, cool weather uh, down in the valley. As we started climbing up, we started noticing a, a, a dusting of snow. By the time we got to the site, we had two inches. And about 35 people, 35, 40 people showed up to collect. Well, what do you do when you're collecting in, in the snow? You brush it aside. The one thing is you're going to get your hands wet. And when it's cold, your hands get kind of numb. But you know, if, if you're there, you must well enjoy it and, uh, and dig into the mountain. So my, one of my favorite stories is also a collecting in the snow story. Um, doing the collecting in Topaz Mountain. Um, I have a picture of that. Um, we went out there, it was snowing the whole time I was out there um, and just spent the day. But if you're, you're hitting there, pounding it with the sledgehammer, you're warm enough to go. Um, hopefully she'll pull that up. Um, but yeah, that just out there in the snow, um, wow. pounding away on the sledge. Um, but about halfway up that hill is where we were on, on, on that side of the mountain. Um, but the, I think one of the funniest stories from when I was collecting was actually a fossil collecting trip. I was focused on sea urchins. And the thing is, when you're out collecting, you might be looking for one particular thing, but keep your mind and eyes open to everything else because I found a fossil fish. But I, I pounded it out of the ground, looked at it. It did not register. I touched it. I, it, I was like, whatever. And I threw it to the side and continued walking on because I was looking for sea urchins. And one of my friends picked it up, and that specimen is now at the Florida Museum because that <laughs> a, 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 a fish uh, was, was not known from that locality. So, <laughs> so you got to keep your eyes and mind open for what you're looking at. So is there a, a favorite uh, or a place you could recommend in Tennessee? Rachel wants to know where you can find good minerals. I, I, well, I, I mentioned the area around uh, Woodbury that is known for geodes. Uh, most of the most of the uh, uh, geo localities are on private property, so you, so you need to get to know uh, property owners. Uh, but once again, there's a lot of mineral clubs in, uh, in, in Tennessee. Uh, just uh, look up um, uh, on, on the website. Well, one good website uh, to look into is the uh, Southeastern Federation of Mineralogical Society. Southeastern Federation of Mineralogical Society. Uh, on their website, they, ha they have listings per state of our mineral clubs and just pick a club near where you live. I am sure they go to all kinds of places uh, in Tennessee. Well, and of course, Tennessee is famous for the Elmwood mine, so you wouldn't be able to collect there, but out in the market, there are even small specimens of really beautiful fluorites and salarite and the barite and the calcites from those mines. Um, so you know, again, you can approach it by straight up field work or by also what's on the market and going to uh, gem and mineral shows or even these days um, shopping on the Internet. Um, there's yeah. there's Facebook pages that you can um, you can you can bid live for stuff that you want or you know you got your usual eBay or such. And, and Tennessee is mostly uh, uh, covered by uh, sedimentary rocks. So uh, uh, any any road cut that you drive by may have fossils. So that's another. Uh, in fact, you have a better opportunity of finding fossils than you do minerals in many cases. 
I have found many a blastoid and 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 brachiopod and way way too many bryozoans in Tennessee, but also some trilobites. So yeah, interesting. So do you ever take your families out collecting? Of course. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times I just tell my kids what we're seeing when we're out um, taking a hike. Um, but my kids have just been intrigued by even the gravel in our in our walkway at the house. Um, I actually have a picture of of that just to show you all the stuff you can see and just the gravel in your that you buy a bag at the at the home improvement store. Um, you can even you can look at the gravel and see how it's sorted. Look at the class size. Look at the rounding that's on it. But actually, in this in these rocks, I actually found igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks. There's jasper and shirt. There's chunks of feldspar that are probably in an actual volcanic uh, material. There's some amphibolite that's got hornblende in it. You got um, granite. Um, actually, there was in one of the pieces in this just in in this in here, I found a an actual preserved crenulated fold um, from some kind of metamorphic rock. Um, but um, I have friends who have brought um, granite granite from the gravel that they've gotten in North Carolina with corundum and amethyst in it. Mm. So who knows what's right in your own backyard for collecting. Wow. And, and for me, I mean, I don't, I don't have any kids, but I got five nephews. So I, I you know, I, I, I've taken them all when they were kids uh, collecting and you sort of have to adjust for attention span, make sure that the, the, the collecting is easy. And then sometimes they get bored and we were in one place, uh, Gray's Mountain, probably the most famous locality, uh, mineral locality in Georgia. After a while, they just got bored and started, they started throwing rocks and mud to make uh, craters. Well, they had a good time. Uh, but one time, one time I took a couple of my nephews. Uh, these are uh, a couple that they had taken them on, on quite a good number of trips. So they, they knew, they, they knew they're collecting and we were not having a good day. We were not having a good productive day. And, and, and uh, one of them says, Uncle Jose, how come you're taking us on all these bogus places? <laughs> <laughs> so they, so they, they had a high level of expectation, let me tell you. So once you get your 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 specimens you've collected, uh, what recommendations do you have about how do you display them when you bring them home? Well, um, for me, and, and I'll, I'm going to get more uh, more into this in my talk next Tuesday, but uh, you know, you bring rocks and you got to select your best ones. Uh, you have to clean them. You have to do some preparation. Sometimes you get to take uh, other parts off. Uh, and, and so, you know, I have I have a number of uh, mineral cases at home. Uh, I showed you my eye candy earlier. I have another one. If you can pull up case two, uh, at least uh, this is the one in, uh, uh, in in my basement where I show uh, most of my uh, my self collected uh, pieces. And uh, so, you know, I have a little display and uh, uh, and I go back and forth. Sometimes I put labels on them. Sometimes I don't. Uh, and, and for the moment, I don't because I like people walking up and say, "Hey, Jose, tell me about about this rock." Uh, but I mean, even a, a, a bookcase, a bookshelf, a tabletop. I mean, uh, but I think if, if you collect and you have some really nice pieces that you that you're, you're pleased with and you want to show them off, you, you, you got to put them somewhere so people can see them. Uh, how about you, Ryan? Well, I don't. I've got a few things um, on shelves around the house, but a lot of stuff is still packed away because of all the, all the different moves um, in college. But my kids, I've been working on their collection to be a little better than mine, and so I've got their stuff in little boxes with um, with little compartments, and and oh. and making sure that they each have labels on their stuff so they know what it is. Um, so. Uh, they can have a, a better collection than I had as a kid because mine largely was just a shoebox filled with right. stuff that was clinging and banging around. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned labeling because I'm going to speak very vociferously about that <laughs> next Tuesday. <laughs> well, guys, we've our, our hour has just zoomed by. Wow. And um, I just really appreciate uh, your expertise and sharing it with everyone out there and in our virtual land. And of course, if you really want to see a great display of minerals and rocks, there's this museum in Cartersville called TELUS that has the most wonderful uh, geology displays. Uh, so uh, you know, please consider coming to visit us and also tuning in to all of our virtual adventures we're going to have next week during the Mineral Symposium. And just want to thank uh, Jose and Ryan uh, for their expertise this afternoon. And thank you. Enjoyed it. Thanks for hosting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> bye bye for now. Thank you. Thank you.